Never mind about dessert. When do we get to the really sweet stuff? <laughs> and I thought I had a sweet tooth. When it comes to a fortune in gold, I am insatiable. Really? Mm. Well, curb that appetite, because the only way we can find the tunnel, even, is with Nikki Smith's help. How can you be certain of that? I can't be certain of it. That's why the only thing to do is to bring Nikki out and ask her. You've gone to such lengths already. There's Christine, who's meant to be Vicky's daughter, Leo Cromwell, who's meant to be Nikki Smith's long-lost lover. What if there isn't any gold? There is gold there, and once we manipulate the return of Nikki, it's going to be ours. Michael, I'm sorry, but all of this is so overly complicated already. You already have Leo digging in the mountain. I'm sure he'll come up with the tunnel sooner or later. Oh, well, look, come over here. I've got something that'll explain this better than my words. Good Lord, what's that? This is a scale model of Lantano Mountain, and if you help me turn Vicki Buchanan into Nikki Smith, a good portion of the gold that lies inside this mountain is going to be yours. Damn, there's gonna be a button to switch here someplace that opens up into that bomb shelter. Where is it? Bo! Bo, if you can hear me, holler! Damn! Over, so set a trap, and not just for him. Sarah's car's outside. Max, you're talking to yourself. Doesn't do you any. Ah! Weird! Why did I have the sense to ask rape where the. gotta go for the bloody fireplace? Just say the word and I'll unlock the door. You can walk out of our honeymoon suite and out of my life. I'm not going to try to stop you. Why are you trying to make this so difficult? Rob, you trick me into coming back here. You play old tapes of because the two I of us. I want you to know that I love you just as much today as I did the first day we met. More. Rob. No, I've look, I've done my bit, Cass. I've had my say. Now it's your turn. You, oh, just when I think I've got you out of my system. I knew it. You still love me. I knew you still love me. Of course, me. I still love you. I haven't stopped loving you. That doesn't change anything. Yes. We belong together. I know it, and now you know it. Sweet for what nothing. is this? This is what this called is the passion pulse. The passion pulse? Mm. I suppose now you're going to tell me that, that violins are going to come out and play music for us? Someone mentioned this violins? Is... Oh, my God. <laughs> this is, without a doubt, the corniest setup I have ever seen in my life. Ah, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Passion, a la Pocono. You know, they even have a mirror that comes down out of the ceiling. All you have to no, do is... No, 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 that's okay. The, the, this passion Pocono is getting me a little seasick as it is. All right, well, we can't have that. Uh, this is one cruise that is never going to end. Now, admit it, you like the place. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, this isn't even on the scale. All right. Forget about the passion pulse and all the other special effects. Something tells me that we can make all the special effects and atmosphere we want. Observe. Inside Lentano Mountain, the secret city of Eterna. That is incredible. Did it really look like that? Well, yes, right down to the hydroponic vegetable gardens and the recycling air and water systems. It's just unbelievable that someone could build such a vast city inside of a mountain and no one else know about well, it. You have to remember, this is over 30 years ago, Gabrielle. At that time, people didn't suspect vast secret projects like this. Good place to hide a king's ransom in gold. Stolen gold, the ill-gotten gains of a cabal of 
Well-respected men from all over the world. And in the hysteria, the atomic war hysteria of the 50s, these guys figured that they should protect their goods from something over which even they wouldn't have any control. Giving birth to Eterna. Impenetrable and invincible. A city fortress designed to keep anybody from getting in or out. It's so different from what I had imagined. And I, I thought of broken walls held up by timbers. No, no, they thought of everything. Steel beams, alloy tubing for air and water, electrical uh, lighting systems, communication systems, you name it. Just to think that you were a little boy, that was your home, <laughs> your playground, your entire world. Uh, yeah, my entire world. Oh, Michael, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. No, you didn't. I chose to show you these models. It's just looking at these things after all those years. Still, my father, he really believed that we were only going to be there for one year. Everybody trusted him. Everybody believed in him. And then when that governor wouldn't let anybody go. But your parents, they tried to reason with him. That's what you said. Everybody tried to reason with him, and then reason turned to rebellion. And at that point, there was no hope of rescue because all the exits were sealed. And then the angry mob had no place to turn but against the city's creators and against its architect. Your poor father. Uh, and mother, but they, they sent you to safety just in time. Uh, certainly a lucky break for me. And dear sweet Roosevelt. <laughs> You're a very special teddy bear. Ah. Stuffed with cash and gold. Your parents did you such a favor, Michael, and their efforts really paid off. Because that gold is the foundation of your fortune, a fortune that now enables you to go back to Eterna and claim the rest. Tell me where they kept the gold. You know, the vault. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the pragmatist. <laughs> Trouble is, I don't know what the vault is. That's as much a mystery to me as the location of the tunnel. Well, it's got to be hidden somewhere deep inside the city. Look at Gabriella. When we get down there, we don't know what we're going to find. We could be we could be surprised. Michael, you don't think that anyone's alive. You said yourself there was a huge explosion. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. I can't imagine anybody actually living through that thing. You never told me what caused that explosion. Not what. Who. The city of Eterna was destroyed all because of Victor Lord. Bye! It's only a first draft, of course. I expect you'll want to edit it before you publish it. I want to do a hell of a lot more than that, Roger. This isn't a newspaper article. It's a, it's a stick of dynamite primed and ready to go off as soon as it hits the newsstand. Wait a minute, Clint. Now, if you want fluff, go hire a hack. I thought you wanted the truth. I guess I was wrong. But uh, hold on just a minute. I didn't say I was rejecting it. At least not yet. But I can't print something like this unless I'm absolutely convinced that you can back it up. Are you doubting my integrity? Your sources, Roger, your sources. Now, you just got through saying yourself that you are new to the newspaper business. We cannot afford to, to print something this volatile unless we have ironclad proof. Look, Clint, I may be new to the world of journalism, but I pride myself in my facts and my ethics. Are you saying every word of this is true? Right down to the Watson wherefores. Really? Well, let's see here. After consulting with Professor Miles Parker of Landview University and other leading scholars, a different picture emerges. 
Not only did Franklin never have a mistress in this area, Franklin himself never visited the land we now call Lantano County. In other words, there is absolutely no validity in Leo Cromwell's claim. I stand behind every word, Clint. Roger, do you know what you're saying? You are not just doubting this man's theory, you are branding him a charlatan and his whole project a hoax. Well, there is no other conclusion to be drawn. That's why I urge an immediate injunction against Cromwell. So before Mountain Lantano uh, suffers any more ecological damage. It just does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I know the man is a flake, but to go to all this trouble knowing that Franklin's letters don't even exist? Well, I can't explain it either, Clint. All I know is it's my job to expose him for the fraud he is. Well, that's very easy for you to say. You don't have to face Vicky after she's read this in the, in the banner. Your wife has always had a reputation for publishing the truth. I'm sure she wouldn't want you to hold this back. This is not just your run-of-the-mill expose, Roger. Leo Cromwell is the father of Vicky's daughter. Clint, take my advice. Don't trust anything Leo Cromwell says or does. Just what do you mean by that? I'm speaking of his pro professional credentials, of course, as an archaeologist. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought you were in the truth-telling business. Why do I get the impression that there's more than just an archaeological dig at stake here? How could Victor Lord have destroyed Eterna when he was one of the first men who helped create it in the first place? He was a complex man. Yes, he was involved in the creation of Eterna. He probably had a few million of his own he wanted to sock away. He loved his fortune as much as he loved his daughter. Loved her? Oh, Michael, it's no secret that Vicky blames her father for turning her into Nicky Smith. In the first place, she thought of him as a greedy, arrogant man. He was. He was that and more. He never would have won any Father of the Year awards. But, as the saying goes, a man can love not wisely but too well, especially if he thinks his daughter is ruining her life. Michael, that tape, the one you found in the time capsule, is that the reason why you know so much about Victor's feelings for Vicky? No, it's not that simple a story, but the tape does explain what led Victor and his daughter to that moment when the explosion occurred and destroyed Eterna. He destroyed a city for Vicky's sake? It's not that simple, I'm telling you. Victor Lord didn't just push a button or pull a switch. In fact, all he could do was stand by and watch while his life's work crashed down before him. I knew I had to stop her from entering the tunnel. She wasn't wearing the pin. That pin was more than just the insignia of Eterna. It was the key that allowed safe passage through the tunnel. Without it, an alarm would sound, a small explosion would follow, and the tunnel would be sealed, preventing her from ever leaving the secret city. I raced through the woods of Lantano Mountain, desperate to stop my daughter. I arrived at the tunnel entrance just as the failsafe mechanism was triggered. I called to her to come back. Thank God I was able to pull her back from the entrance just in time. But not before... Not before the small explosion went off. And then another and another. Something was wrong, terribly wrong. What was meant to be a, a foolproof means of blocking the entrance somehow set off explosions deep inside the mountain. Before I knew it, the entire city was being annihilated beneath it. And worst of all, my daughter stood there frozen at the entrance. Something had snapped inside her, just as the city itself was breaking into pieces. Victoria was no longer Victoria. She had turned into something else, something, someone else, into Nikki Smith. Oh my God. So that's how Vicky turned into Nikki the first time. Well, it's no wonder she saw an entire city blow up right in front of her and all the inhabitants trapped inside. That wasn't the only reason. There was much, much more. She knew a man who died in that explosion, knew him and loved him. It wasn't Nikki Smith's baby that Victor Lord took away. It was Vicky's. Whoa! Oh my God, get you to a hospital. No, I... Vicky! Where? In there. Where? In there. Come on. Come on. Come on, the gas has been turned off. We've got to get out of here. Come on. Oh. Vicky. Sarah. Are you all right? Yeah, 
Come on, come on. Come on, get out. Let's get you out of here. Jury, that's not gonna bring your brother back. Damn it, don't you think I know that? I just. Oh God, you're right. I just hated her so much for what she did. I just. Oh God. Max, it's all right. It's all over now. It's all over. It's okay. Biggie, everything's okay. I just want you to take it easy, okay? Take it slow. Well, is Bo all right? Okay. All right, take, take care of Sarah and Vicky. Ray, they got the worst of it. Ursula tried to turn that other room into a gas chamber. They were in there. I called in a paramedic team just in case. They'll be here any minute. Let's get everybody upstairs. Come on. Let me help you with Vicky. I'll do it. Ah, hey, 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 easy with him. Bo is shot. He needs help. He needs help. Roger, I may look like just some desk jockey to you, but I have spent enough time pounding pavements, looking for stories, and checking out sources to know when there's more to something than what meets the eye. Now, there's something personal in your attitude toward Leo Cromwell, both in what you've written and what you just got through saying. What do you got against the man? I don't even know the man, Clint. You don't even know the man? And you tell me not to trust him? Come on. Now, what happened? You lock horns with him sometime in the past? He do something to hurt you or hurt someone you care about? What? What is it? Clint, I, um... If I seem obsessed with Leo Cromwell, it's only because I'm afraid he will destroy a priceless ecological treasure. Hmm. You keep saying that, but I can't help thinking that there's... Excuse me. We're not through with this discussion. Buchanan? Uh, Rafe! <laughs> what, what are you doing? Uh, you're not on duty tonight, are you? I thought reporters were the only ones that had... What? Where? I'm on my way. Uh, okay, all right, the hospital. When are you gonna be there? I'll meet you at the emergency room. What, anything wrong? Yes, and I'm afraid it concerns you too. Me? Yeah, come on, we're going to the hospital. Vicky's lover? I already told you it wasn't Leo. Yes, I know that Christine is only a ploy, but I, I never would have guessed in my wildest dreams that Vicky had an affair and, and a child from a man who was from Eterna. I don't know how or when, but somehow he managed to get out of Eterna, met Vicky, and fathered her child. But she can't have been more than 16 or 17 at the time. Did her father know? No, I suppose she would have kept that a secret from him, wouldn't she? Not secret enough. Somehow, Victor managed to find out about the affair, and that's when the tragedy really began to escalate. I never meant for it to happen. I was only hoping to stop my daughter before she made a terrible mistake. She was afraid of me and how I would react to her young man. That's what made her run back to Eterna, back to him. But I wasn't running after her to come between two lovers. I didn't see her with a pin, that infernal Eterna pin. I knew that if she tried to go into the tunnel without it, the fail-safe device would go off and kill her in the explosion. That's why I had to stop her. Thank God I did. But as one explosion triggered another, all we could do was watch the world before us go up in flames and falling rock. Now you know. It wasn't just a city that was destroyed. It was my parents and everybody else that was down there. Mickey looked on, knowing that her lover was trapped in that explosion. And that is what transformed her into Nikki Smith. I like Vicky very much, Michael. And I would hate to see her get hurt with the memories of her young lover. Memories that have been buried in her subconscious for years. Are you having a change of heart here? You're not gonna help me turn into Nikki Smith? I didn't say that. Vicky's strong. 
I'm sure she can cope with her personality disorder. She has in the past. Yes, well, I'm sure she can, too. After all, Nikki is just another part of Vicky, right? Um, if we unlock Nikki, we're only unlocking another part of Vicky, wouldn't you say? That's hardly murder. You could even say it's a form of giving birth. Wouldn't, Michael, wouldn't you, you don't have to rationalize this for me. The simple fact is that we have to release Nikki Smith or we don't find the gold. Straight talk, and that's what I like. Now, listen, tell me, what makes you so sure that you can help me unlock Nikki? Well, I'm not so sure, but I can promise you that Tina can. I have heard that promise before. Michael, be patient. I've thought of a way just to mend my fences with Tina. When she gets back from her honeymoon, I'm going to ask her to go into business with me. Oh, no, you don't. Not with the money I put into that hotel. Relax, Michael. It's just a ploy. I'm going to ask Tina to help me redecorate the inside of the pricier suites at the hotel. You trust her taste that much? <sighs> Tina doesn't have any taste. But don't worry, I'll be able to cover her more atrocious choices. <laughs> Meanwhile, she'll be so flattered that I wanted her to help, she'll forget she was ever angry at me. All right, all right, let's say that she works for you. Do you think that she's going to trust you again? Yes, enough for me to find out how to release Nikki Smith. You got this all figured out, don't you? Hmm, any complaints? Not one. And as long as you deliver as promised, you will have earned your share of the gold, hmm? Michael, you're not going to hurt Vicky. Of course not. I'm simply going to try and duplicate the moment that she first became Nikki Smith. And if everything works right, Nikki will return. And show us to the gold. <laughs> Aren't you uh, forgetting something? Oh? We haven't had dessert yet. You're right. We couldn't neglect that, mm -hmm. could we? <laughs> Especially when it's my favorite part. Mm. Mm. All right, Chuck, let's get this lady out to the patrol car. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Yeah, hey, I'm with you, Captain. No, wait just oh, a second. Oh, don't let him near me. He's going to kill me. Don't no, I won't. It's okay. Just have a question. Why did you kill my brother? mean to hurt him. It was an accident. It was a terrible accident. I didn't want to kill your brother. Believe me, I know what it is like to lose somebody that you love. The emptiness, the, the pain that, that just never ends. I, I, if I could, I would do anything on earth to bring your brother back. It was, it was all her fault. Tina's. She betrayed Patrick and then she killed his baby and then she betrayed me too and killed my father. I had no choice but to put that bomb in the wedding cake. Listen, that's enough. Come on. Let's get her out of the house. Come on. Oh, you think my work is over, but it's only begun. You, you can lock me up in a prison asylum, anything, but there's nothing that's strong enough to hold me for very long because pretty soon I'm going to get out. And when I do, I'm going to get to Tina and I'm going to see that she pays for what she's done. Nice speech, Ursula, but I've made a vow myself to lock you up for the rest of your life and where you're going you'll never be able to hurt anybody again come on move oh don't worry honey i'm harmless move <laughs> max oh my god i was so worried i heard about the shooting and the gas and i was so afraid hey, that sh Earth sh 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 she never laid a glove on me of course you can if you want to that's my Max. He could have been gassed and shot, and all you can think about is fooling around. I think that's called a love of life and a love of you. Well, I don't care what they call it. I love it. Clint, you can see her now. <sighs> Sweetheart, oh. what's the verdict? You okay? Yes, I told you. When they will be in, no wounds, no scars. I'm fine. I'd feel a lot better if I heard it from your doctor. Oh, she'll be fine, Claire. Can I go home? No, not just now, Vicki. I want to keep you overnight in the hospital for observation. In the morning, Clint can take you home. Okay. And no arguments from you, young lady. I want you staying here safe and sound until we're sure that Ursula Blackwell is behind bars. You know, I think we made the right decision in not telling Tina. I'm glad she stayed away from Landview while Ursula was on the loose. I'd feel even happier if I knew the bow was okay. How is he, Larry? Well, he's fine, remarkably. I told Clint uh, the bullet went right through his side, didn't uh, do any serious internal damage. Oh, the prognosis is a full recovery.
Karate. Oh, Karen. I thought you were asleep. I was, but I was having the most incredible dream. This beautiful little blonde tiptoes into my room. And then I wake up and it's turns out that she's real. She's still there. You're gonna be all right. You're too big a flirt to die. Yeah. How about you? Why, uh, why are you up walking around when they got uh, Vicky and me flat on our backs? Well, for one thing, I wasn't a hero. For another, I didn't inhale as much gas as Vicky. <sighs> they told me I can go home whenever I want. Really? Well, that's good news. Um, hey, forget about the uh, hero stuff, okay? Sorry. No can do. You saved my life. I don't know how I'm ever going to thank you for that. Well, I was just stupid enough to uh, not be able to get out of the way of that bullet. The hard thing was pretending that I was Patrick, you know, and I, having to kiss that Ursula Blackwell. Talk about leaving a bitter taste in your mouth. I think I can fix that. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. No, 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 no. There's no need to apologize. Sir, I, I, I think that kiss did me more good than all the um, tape and bandages that they have in this hospital. No, but, but I mean, I just, I want you to know that I wasn't thinking clearly. Otherwise, I, I mean, what I mean is I, I was just, I was so upset that you were almost killed trying to save my life. And, you know, I, I just, I was trying to repay you somehow not that my kiss could oh. repay you. Sarah, listen. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every second of it. As a matter of fact, I think that I could probably use a little more, you know, just as medicinal uh, purposes. You understand? Sarah, sweetheart, Hi. I was worried sick over you. Oh. Oh, here she is, alive and well. Thank God. Yeah, I'm fine, Dad. It was Bo oh. who was shot. Oh, no, come on. Don't pay any attention to her. She and Vicky, they got the worst of the whole thing. But your, your daughter never lost her cool, Mr. Gordon. <laughs> you sure it's all right for you to be released? Yes, I'm fine. I just I just have a little bit of a sore throat, that's all. Bo, I, I heard about how you risked your life to save Sarah's and Vicky's if there's... Any way I can repay you? No, 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 that's all right. It's it just like, uh, just like she said, that I happen to be in the right place at the right time. And from now on, I, I think I'll try to make a, a habit of that. Uh, sweetheart, why don't you say your goodbyes to Bo and it'll give me time to check up on Vicky. Um, okay. And then I'll take you home. I'll see you later. Oh, excuse me, Clint. Uh, is the patient up for a visitor? Uh, I, uh, I think so. Come on in, Roger. Hello again. How's Sarah? Oh, up and about. I'm happy to Good. I just want to let you know I'm sorry I asked Sarah to go out to Stonecrest today. Well, you're hardly to blame. It was our dumb luck that we ran into Ursula. No, no, it can't be denied. I should never have let you go, Victoria. Victoria? Oh. Gentlemen, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, need to take a blood sample. Would you leave? Larry, you told me that I was That's all nothing right. serious. Just a routine hospital procedure. Of course, if you would prefer to have another doctor do it. <laughs> no, of course not. Thank you, Vicky. I'll be right outside, sweetheart. Now, if you're a good girl and don't say ouch, you may get a lollipop. Two lollipops. Two lollipops? Two. No wonder I'm flat broke all the time, Larry. <laughs> Roger. Oh. Hey, big brother. Come on in. How's Vicky? Oh, she's fine. Fine. Uh, have you seen Roger Gordon? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, he was in here a while ago, and then he, uh, 
Grabbed Sarah by the arm, just whisked her out of here. I guess couldn't wait to get her home. I know we do things differently, but so what? We'll honeymoon now, and then we'll get married, hopefully tomorrow. And then we'll come back to this very room, and we'll do some more honeymooning. You know, I bet if we tip the bellhop enough, we won't have to get out of bed for a week. But it won't stop there. Once stars starts making some more money, I may buy this resort so that no one else can have this room but us. What do you think, Cass? I think tonight will be a memory that I'll always cherish. Oh, you always did say things better than I did. Cherish, that's what we'll do. But, you know, this is just the first memory of many. I mean, we'll just gather them all up and put them in our family scrapbook until we can show them to our grandchildren. Great, great grandchildren. Cass. Sweetheart, what, where are you going? Home. Home? But this is our home for tonight. I mean, wherever we are from now on is, is our home. Tonight was great. It was incredible. But this is our last night. What are you talking about? You love me. I love you. Tonight was proof of that. Tonight proved one thing, Rob. It proved that it showed us both how beautiful things really can be between us. Not can, will. Now, come on, take off that robe and come lie down. To me. We could make love a hundred times tonight, and each time would be more incredible than the next. But all the problems that we have would still be there. They would never change. We can fix anything. No. We can't change your past. We can't fix your past. It's always been there to haunt us, Rob, and it always will be. And I'm sorry, but I can't live with that hanging over my head. But you can live without me, without us. I don't want to, but I really don't have a choice. <laughs> yes, you do. We'll just stay together. We'll work together. No, I've tried that. Now, working means I do the work, I have the faith, you lie to me, and I take the fall. I love you, but I also love myself, and I can't go through that, that again. I'm sorry, I can't. You can't just end it this way. There's no other way to end it. Look at it this way. At least we have this incredible memory for one of our last ones. I don't want any stupid memory. I want you. Shh. Oh, it has to be this way. Before there's any hurt or bad memories between us, let's just part as lovers and friends. Ursula is a sick woman. Whatever she's done, it was the work of a deranged and demented mind but me. I was ready to kill her with my bare hands. I, I would have been... Max, you lost control for a moment. That's understanding after everything that's happened, after what she did to Steve. That's no excuse. It's like... It's like I gave in to something inside me, the, the worst, most violent part of me. It was your love for Steve that love? brought it out. Hey, I, I used to think they were these black and white things until tonight. I never knew how closely connected they were inside of me. Well, I wish you hadn't had to learn that, but it's made you stronger, Max. Oh, uh -huh, you weren't here. I was anything but strong tonight. Well, I am here now, and I see a good man here, a man that deserves to have good things happen to him from now on. What are you trying to do? Make me feel better? What, me? Why I do yeah. that to you? It's pure selfishness. We haven't seen each other since you came back from Stephen's funeral. Max, if I could, I would take you away from here, far away, someplace where I could help you heal the pain that you're feeling tonight. I know just the place. The perfect place to heal the pain and make it all okay again. When I went back to the funeral in Texas, I uh, went by the old ranch. Place where you, Steve, grew up? 
Yeah. It's up for sale again, and there aren't any takers so far. And it got me thinking, Megan, that if I liquidate all my assets here in Landview and I sell out my shares in WVLE, with the cash, I could buy the ranch back. Buy the ranch? You? I know it wouldn't be easy. I mean, the place needs a ton of work. But once a cowboy, always a cowboy, right? And I'm sure I could turn it into something Steve would be very proud of. Well, I've always said that you could do anything once you set your mind to it. That's it. Tomorrow morning, when the bank's open, I'll go in and get the ball rolling. Max, the... I don't want to ruin your dream, but that ranch was Steve's dream, not yours. All the more reason for me to go ahead with it. I'm not exactly building an empire here. I'm not asking you to build an empire. I don't want that for you. I just want you to follow your own dreams. What you can't do is bring Steve back by sacrificing your own happiness. Don't you think I know that? But I need to get back to my roots. Being in Texas made me feel that way. I'm sorry, but what you felt was guilt and remorse for your brother. And you can't erase that by making a move that you're not ready for. Max, you can't think objectively right now. You're, you're too upset. If you made a big change right now, it might be a big mistake. Stay here in Landview and, and, and let me and your friends take care of you. Help you through the feelings you're feeling right now. Okay? Megan, I... Okay. We will do it your way for now. All right. Let's get out of here. Let me start a little of that TLC. Now, I'm not going to try to hold you, but I will make this prediction. Someday, our paths will cross again. Someday, we will have what you are giving up right now. We belong together, and we will be together someday. one other thing I need to say. If you ever need me, if you're ever in trouble, or if you just need to talk, call me. I'll be there. Goodbye. No goodbyes, Cass. Not for us. as I hoped. These are the original blueprints of the hotel, right where I could easily get to. Gabrielle, we don't need those anymore. I already dug up the time capsule. Michael, don't be so short-sighted. This can still be of great help to your plan. Oh, how so? Think of them as bait, and Tina as our fish. When Tina and Cord get back from their honeymoon, which won't be too long since Ursula Blackwell has been arrested. She has? Yes, I just heard it on the news. Anyway, it won't be too long before they get back from their honeymoon, and when they do, I shall be there to greet them with blueprints in hand. Oh, and thus begins your redecorating scheme. Oh, give the man a cigar. Make it two. <laughs> I know I can convince Tina to help me. She's not exactly your bosom buddy these days. She will be. Once I convince her that I couldn't possibly do the job without her, oh, and how I do value her taste and her judgment. Oh, you are getting awfully good at this, aren't you? Mm. Maybe too good. Mm. Mr. Grant, I don't know anything. Oh? <laughs> Why is it that all of a sudden I feel talked out? Uh, maybe we should entertain ourselves some other way, hmm? Mm. Well, you are the teacher. Mm. Well, this is the way to the bedroom. <laughs> mm. Or should I say, the classroom? Oh, you! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
young man. One in the light. Who is he? 